Hello, folks. Welcome back. It's Star Ladder Season 12, China. And we are going to now shift over to Group B, where we're going to find a matchup now between VG Gaming with their slightly new roster as they will take an on Hearts Get Together or Hyper Glory team. I, I miss the old name. I'm, I'm a Hearts Get Together man. I'm not a big believer in Hyper Glory team. There's, They're both what, wonderful there's, names. What's Hyper Glory? Like, is regular glory not good enough? You've got to, you know, snort a pixie stick as well, really, to get into it. Yeah, Feel sure. glorious. I don't know. I'm an HG. I'm a. I'm, a, I'm an HG. I'm a. I'm a hearts get together guy. Yeah, isn't it? I've heard that they got that because it was a clothing sponsorship named Hearts Get Together. So it, can you imagine just? No, like, I don't think. So. I think it. It wasn't actually. I think it wasn't actually. No, it was their name. Okay. Now there was another team that came out around the same time before they were Tang Fu and Zhou. They were. They didn't have. An, they had some weird name and like the team Liquid Forum guys started calling them Team Adidas. So everyone like thought they were actually their official name was Team Adidas, but they weren't sponsored. They had no affiliation with Adidas. They just decided to call them Team Adidas, and it stuck. Then people like everyone started calling them this, and this wasn't even their name, <laughs> only in the Western community. But oh. anyway, that's uh, that's I guess uh, we digress. As you said, Vici Gaming versus HGT, mm -hmm. the debut of How, the new <sighs> carry. How will he do? Only one way to find out. Let's go ahead and go into the draft. Without further ado, it's Hyper Glory team taking on Vici Gaming in a best of three matchup. And it's very crucial at this point. We already saw a little bit of that Group B action earlier. And, well, this is uh, more of a stacked group right now. So this could be anyone's game. We could see a surprising upset. Yesterday, we got to see Newbie take on Hyper Glory team. And after game number one, I was like, okay, well, Newbie, it's the same Newbie from DAC. They just got raffle stomped so hard. And I was like, well, okay, that's how it is. But then they surprisingly came back, and they looked pretty sharp in game two and three. Uh, pretty dang good. Like, as if they're looking to walk out of stage one with an easy pass to stage two. But... We'll see if Vici Gaming are going to be as dominant as they have been uh, with Black on the squad. Yeah, there may be some growing Five pains here. I'm not sure how much they've actually gotten to scrim with how Chinese New Year did end fairly recently. So they could still be kind of getting accustomed to each other. But at the same time, these are all veteran players, and I'm sure they've played a, le a lot together in in-houses uh, and, you know, just scrims over the the past year or two so I, I think it'll be a certainly a quicker adjustment period for how than it was for black there's no language barrier to worry about so looking at the draft Ten it's looking remaining. fairly similar to the first two games i think the big difference here is that the sniper is actually Five getting first phase remaining. banned uh and the the venge is being allowed through uh, someone that i think was banned first phase two out of the three games in the last series yeah definitely the banning dynamic duo of shadow fiend and vengeful spirit but yeah, you did, with nobody wants to give that pair away, that's for sure. Uh, so, well, they do grab the Vengeful Spirit, an early grab on a Tidehunter. It's uh, kind of surprising to me, but they put a lot on this hero. They have it as, like, their second go-to after a Batrider, where other, like I said before, other regions, they're like, they'll maybe even experiment a bit. They'll go for, like, the Bristle. They'll go even an Earthshaker, as of recent I've seen. I've seen Empire Ten do a Sand King three. in the offlane. But uh, Tidehunter seems to be what they really want to do. So they get a hold of that, and they have team fight impact there. Hyperglory team, and, well, Axe Queen of Pain, very snowball-y kind of get up. Time. Good mobility between the both of them once they get the Blink Dagger. But, uh, yeah. And, hey, look, a Wisp ban. Finally, someone acknowledges that there's this energy ball in the game. It's funny that Vici Gaming are the ones banning the Wisp, because th for a while, I don't know if you remember, like, after TI4, it felt like every game it was either Drow Visage or Tiny Wisp from this Vici Gaming squad, but... Times have changed. HDT do love to run their Wisp. Uh, they have Air, who's a fantastic Wisp player. Uh, in the past, they generally, I think, put Pretty Haw on it. But either way, Wisp will be removed from the pool. We're going to see a Lion ban out by HGT. Huh, maybe uh, is a pretty good support versus the Quap. Maybe they're even thinking towards like something like a, a Storm as well. Some very mobile carried, uh, perhaps potentially an Ember Spirit. And they, they may just be worried about that instant lockdown and initiation. Yeah. Vici Gaming, lots of other supports they could go for here, though. I felt like at least when Five they had their older remaining. roster, Vici Gaming would always reserve their offlane pick. They were a team that would love to try out different stuff. They had a Reserve Phoenix. Time. They would they would do the Broodmother. We haven't even seen a Broodmother picked up yet today. I mean, we're not going to see a Broodmother into an Axe, I mean, more than likely. But they were one of the teams that would still do it even into an Axe because Ice Ice Ice, man, he, it, 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 was it the Summit too? He did some serious work with it, so... He's on. He's on the short list of top offlaners, if not the best in the world. Then yeah. I, I think you'd have a hard time not putting him in the top two or three. And mm. well, 
at the same time, maybe they're just confident with the Tide Hunter pick. They may have a strategy that's built around him. The the big thing with the Tide is always can they just zone him out of the lane early? Like Quap is pretty good at zoning Tide Hunter. They could run her as the safe laner. Axe does okay against Tide if he's got enough lockdown. Could even kill him off early. Your stout shield will be very important. Uh, and then aside from that, if he does get shut down the lane, do they do they stop the ancients? If he can farm the ancients as well, they're going to be in danger. And looks like after careful consideration, Vici see the lion ban are worried about a potential storm pick on the back of it. And just decide to play it safe. They're going to go into an ancient apparition now. Gives them very strong lanes. It goes prepares well with the Venge. It's a good mix of physical and magic damage here. Some minus armor for the team. Still no real setup for this Ice Blast. You can't really count on Ravage as such. So, well, Vici Gaming yet to, like, fully unveil their draft. But I guess the, the old school go-to pick here would be that Morphling I mentioned. I'm not so sure Vici have that in mind, though. I think it might be something a little more aggressive for them. With Howe coming in, uh, do you think he's just he's kind of filling the shoes of Black, or do you anticipate may, maybe a swap as far as how the roles go? They've, they've been quoted in interviews as saying they want to play more aggressive. That was part of what they were looking for with their carry. So uh, Howe definitely fits the bill. He's often been called the Havost of the East, just in terms of how aggressive he likes to play. Yeah. Now, uh, Havost has been playing extremely well over the past couple months. I actually I haven't seen him since Starlighter. Uh, started up and I guess they struggled there but okay it is going to be the Morphling now we've seen two kinds of Morphlings lately we've seen the carry Morphling it hasn't had a whole lot of success though to be fair it hasn't been picked much either and we've seen the offlane Morphling disgusting spammable four second stun you get your soul ring tranquil boots blink dagger it's just it's gross to play against now if you want to run that, generally you want a really high damage support to back it up. Skyrath Mage is like the the obvious go-to ideal one with the low cooldown ult, mm -hmm. a lot of burst damage. This looks more like a carry Morphling, and I'm curious how HGT are going to adjust to seeing it. They don't really have great lockdown for Morphling right now. They don't have a Doom, they don't have any you know, reliable silences. Quap could build an Orchid, but uh, so far it does feel like a pretty strong Morphling game. And I'm hearing from you or, or from the source you said that VG Gaming are going to look to play things aggressive, but this lineup to me doesn't say aggressive. No, I all. mean, you know, maybe, maybe they just tried to fool everyone with the, the interviews. Maybe they were mistranslated. They're like, we're going aggressive. Ha <laughs> ha, nerds, bad. prepare for an 80-minute game. <laughs> 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 we're going to take you and test your fatigue levels. Enjoy your arcanas. You might not be around to collect them, though. If yeah, you you die be, of fatigue watching this game. It'll be 2018. <laughs> Chen's going to be the fourth pick here for Hyperglory team, uh, and we saw not good success with it in the hands of Ehome, but Hyperglory team are going to give it a go. They might actually have a lineup that could be very aggressive, so this makes me believe that Hyperglory team, the the clock could be working against them. They might be looking to get more done sooner than later to not allow this Morphling to really thrive, to not allow Tidehunter to get to that amazing grace period where he gets a refresher orb and certainly not an Agnum's ancient apparition they just want to make sure they kind of get the job done they do not push very quickly though they have Chen and that's it they have no one who kills buildings quickly they have maybe a like they have very little sustain so if they yeah if they want to run a push strat they need like a, a beefy pusher so a drow a lichen even then, though, it's going to be hard to end the game before Vici come online. They have Ice Blast. They now get an Invoker. It looks like a could very well be that Quas Wex Invoker. And HGT are going to kind of change things up here, though. They'll call an Audible. Go for the Templar Assassin. It does allow them to Roche, something you usually want to have when you're drafting on Dire Side, in which they didn't really up until this last pick. So they get some Minus Armor. It's a hero that can shut down Invoker in lane, potentially. But going into the mid game, if the TA doesn't get a whole lot done early... It's going to be tough to do anything. You're up against the, the yeah. Anchor Smash, Gush, Rat just like a whole lot of stuff flying around. You're going to be stunned, kited. Morphling generally matches up pretty well against TA later yeah. on in the game. Uh, very difficult to burst. And they, again, still don't have a true solution to Morphling later on. Unless Queen of Pain manages to farm a Hex. But by that point, presumably, Hal's got some items of his own. So I think this can work for HGT. But they're the team that's under a little more pressure to yeah. get the early Ten blink on the axe, maybe the TA, go for the Roche, take objectives. Whereas Vici are perfectly content to sit back, farm ancients, get the Morphling six slotted, and, and angle for late game. Clash in styles, Dakota. We'll have to see which battle. style kind of holds if it was kind of the 
death ball, get objectives done, go one by one, TI4 kind of a style, then I would have to give a slight nod to Hyper Glory team here. But for Vici Gaming, seems pretty, I don't want to say standard, but it feels pretty clean of a lineup. I was hoping for things to be a bit spicy. Maybe Ice 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 would kind of go over to the Invoker side and we could see the old classic Ice 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 Invoker that I used it's to tear it so up with. Long. But and we won't be treated to that. Just he's a un very unflashy kind of a hero in your Tide Hunter, but he is a game changer. So we'll have to see. They're going aggressive early on, though. They're moving right into enemy territory here, and we don't see a lot of these Easter teams do that. They see a Chen, and they see a way that they can block out these camps. Pretty Ha does have a Sentry on hold just in case, and you see there one it's, ward's going to go right behind. It's the really camp. tough to fight Vici at the early levels. Look at Ice Ice Ice. He's just going to walk up top all by his lonesome. Gets up in Kaka's face, kind of wants to scout out the lanes here. Now they've seen ZSMJ. Unfortunately, he may be a bit too far off on his own, taking a whole lot of damage. They're going to um, lift him, toss him back. He's dead. Where's the backup? A teammate maybe can get the deny here. They are going to bail him out. That was not part of the plan, but <laughs> they'll make the best of it. Well, they and are this, going aggressive. <laughs> yeah, they're going aggressive one way or another. That's for damn sure. Okay. Do they actually get a first blood off of this? No, now we're going back the other way. <laughs> we're just seeing like volleys of auto attacks flying out each direction. Everybody being punished, but... Gang wars here nobody, the top of the river. Nobody falling. I, I thought there was like a more of a plan behind that move where the rest of the team was going to follow him in, but... Ice 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 just... It looked like he wanted to scout, scout the lanes and just got a little overzealous. Look at this. Icy just pulls the... Yeah, thanks for the wave. <laughs> I'm going to take it away now. Back up to the tower. <laughs> Have fun farming under your tower, idiot Morphling. <laughs> <laughs> well, Hal will make do with the under tower CS game. And uh, for Icy, it's not as hard. He might just... Yeah, he's just even going to wait. Hold the camp here so the Creepalibrium will work a little bit better in his favor. And he'll have that first wave to work with on a solo. And Axe is happy with that one, but... Here we go. So, mid lane matchup, Super's Invoker and Air, notoriously known for being the pioneer of the Brewmaster play back in the day. Now kind of representing his Templar Assassin here with his two shared tangos. Already got his bottle. Nice for him. And Super showing him that he's already got the cold snap. So, it is indeed looking like a Quas Wex kind of a get up here for him. Just, just let him know what, what spells he has. Uh, I can break from. that refraction with a cold snap. Watch out, buddy. Oh, he's doing really you. well. Already 5 and 1 on that first wave. and. He, he has gone quads, so no bonus damage, just the null tally to help out. This is a very nice start for Super. TA tends to really have the upper hand around like that level 3 to 5 mark, especially with the level 3 refraction, but in spite of that, just having that good first wave, suddenly you get your blades of attack, you're able to keep up a little better, and it can it can have a big impact on how the next the next like couple of minutes of CS can go. So when the dust settles, Dakota, they did manage to block off a lot of the Chen's jungle here. The first sentry by the Dire Mist. Very difficult to deward this particular camp uh, with one sentry. And it seems he wants to... Where did they drop the other, actually? They have one sentry down Oh, they used here. one to block the enemy pull camp as well. And then, yeah, down over here. Yeah. So, yeah, this, this Chen's going to struggle. Two of his best camps are removed. This one's available, but that's something that the offlane Tidehunter can leech. So if you go to farm this camp as the Chen... And then Tidehunter will be happily collecting some experience of his own. It, it really takes the, the wind out of the Chen sails early on. And we saw that it didn't work out so well for Ehom in the last both, game. Both teams struggling with the, the ward game here. So we see Vichy Gaming actually dropped two sentries. They, their sentry sees this one. I guess they just didn't walk there. Yeah, it does. Oh, huh. well. It's 32 seconds, so he still has time to go back and deward it before the camp will spawn. It's, yeah, but it's going to expire soon anyway. But they want to go for IC. Uh, or at least apparently apparently no one can deward today. <laughs> or everyone's just amazing at warding. I'm not sure which. It depends on whether you're half, a glass half empty or half full kind of guy, Dakota. But one way or another, uh, teams are struggling as far as the ward game goes. Just trying to make the best of it. Icy's, though, still very persistent. Moves on forward. He's level four now on Axe and only two, three minutes in. But mid lane, early cold snap onto air. He just immediately goes under the cover and will walk away. But Super kind of asserting his dominance here in the mid lane early on against this TA. 11 to find CS for him. But top CS is for ZSMJ on the Queen of Pain. Don't see him play these kind of heroes very often. He's more of a farming kind of hero. I know he's notoriously known for playing a lot of life stealer, but Queen of Pain seems to be more of a flashy kind of snowball hero that we don't see him do very oh, I often. I see. Man mode gets the two hero Ooh. call off on FY and Fender, then gets stunned. Ooh. They never got to use their chilling touch, though. And had they gotten to use it, probably goes down there, gives up the first blood, but able to live to fight another day. FY is pretty low here. He's in the danger zone, but he wants to go in. 
This is something Icy won't necessarily expect, such a low HP Venge to make a move like that. It's a risky play, but if he can get that stun off, it, it could well be your... I guess not. Technically your first blood, even though not yeah. the first kill There's of the Blood game. has been shed, but yeah. <laughs> no one has claimed any sort of kill, so... Well, this Icy, though, he's in good position. Starts walking down, says, don't touch me. Quickly throws up a battle hunger, and he has easy access to a DD rune here on the bottom. Double at that same it. moment, Super is going to head out the other way towards the top rune. And I'm just so impressed by Super. 17 and 5 mid against the 16 and 8 TA. That is... That is not easy. Oh, He's going to want to dive ice, 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 but Super's right there. Lands an easy tornado set up with the EMP. Kaka is going to go down. That should be your first blood, and it will be claimed by Ice, Ice, Ice. Gets redemption from his, they well, can somewhat of a first they blood. They can invoke right? that cold snap soon. The SMJ has to be careful about this dive. He goes oh, for it. Blake, scream. He's baited him into the tower, but it looks like CSMJ may live to tell the tale, at least surviving for now. A couple more club swipes. It's only a level one anchor smash. Well... He thought he could bait him in, but just didn't quite have the follow-up to get the kill. Still, first blood going the way of Vici. Yep. And for Ice Ice Ice, too, and his offlane Tidehunter. So he's got 700 gold already saved up. Looking at the Ancient Camp, they have one stack there, so he's got a good track. to move towards the Blink Dagger bottom lane. Icy getting a, a little bit of taste of what the ice really feels like there with the cold feet. Nice wave form forward, and it's going to be Hal making his first kill under the VG Gaming name. Nicely done from him. Stay frosty, my friend. So Super did not spend his gold before he died. Bit unfortunate, he had the he had the phase boots instead. Uh, it's going to end up buying a set of sentries. You, you really need these, because if you let the TA get a trap down, and then she drops that second trap, she can easily dive you for either a kill or at least force a teammate to rotate in. So just wants to make sure there's no wards in the area, no traps that can prove kind of a nuisance in this matchup. The TA is caught up, though. Now sitting at 26 and 16, your invoker needing a little more CS now. This is... I think overall it turns out to be a very even trade where even though Vici Gaming do get the first blood, it's more than made up for by the personal time the TA gets as well as the fact that the entire time Chen has been having a grand old time here in the woods, he's looks like he's done a decent job of farming and just applying pressure on the map. Yeah. A little bit of both. The hybrid Chen, if you will. Pressuring top, but then still going back and finding his bit of farm. I'll have to see at this point in time, though, if he wants to commit to the farm to I get I mean, just look how time, this but, is uh, a level 2 Vengeful Spirit. FY is very far behind. Yeah. that's the. I think that's the biggest difference here in the graphs is just how little that Venge is getting. As well as the CS. HGT have three of the top four last hitters on their side. That's not the FY God I know. He needs to be getting some Where are farm. your gods now? Yeah, where's your FY God now? He's like FY Pleb at this point. He needs to kind of build it on up. So, <laughs> yeah, it's it, I, the main thing will be if he can go get some experience from these ancients with the the Tide Hunter. Oh yeah. If he can be there when those go down, then he'll catch up pretty nicely. But that's he'll something HGT point, could yeah. potentially steal. They have the axe. They have the Chen. They have heroes that can tank and farm these. The TA is pretty good at clearing ancients with some backup there. It's. It's no guarantee that this Tidehunter gets them, and they have been scouted and trap warded as well. The, war the trap there is a kind of a ghetto ward, so they know exactly what's going on with these ancients. I see. I know he's already brought down once, but he's hold it's good position, but he continues to get bullied out from this lane. Not enough so that he doesn't have to get a part of the XP, but they keep pressuring him there. FY, though, keeps the movement here, going from mid to top to bottom. Now he continues to scout out the mid lane period here, and look at this. It looks like they know about the ancient stack right yeah, now. Yeah, yeah. The TA illusion, yeah, and the trap. I think that's what you were talking about before. So it's, they got it covered. It's gonna be. I think HGT could even try like to gank those potentially, but it'll come down to the invoker. If the invoker is in position with tornado EMP, it's a bit risky to to walk in and, and try and contest. They're gonna make their going bottom onto icy though. Stay frosty, my friend. Nope, he is He will. Gonna, he'll TP out. Yeah, he'll stay warm. He just says, see you later. Stay toasty and stay. He's fine. Walks out and away. Your eight-minute rune's going to pop up. A very happy Rubik will snag up a bounty rune. And now they look to go for a smoke, but mid lane, Aaron Super's still kind of going toe-to-toe -to -toe here. And your Super's now at 33 and 12. TA has kind of gone up and ahead with CS now, LD. It's turned around. 35 and 21 for your TA. And pressure could be coming onto Super as that smoke gate could be coming in from behind. Uh, they need the, they need to get a range for the lift. If if he sees them coming, he can just chuck out a tornado, and yeah. it's not going to happen. They change direction now. They want to go for top here. Tidehunter is not uh, level six yet. Oh, this FY. is why 
He's pretty close. Oh, they get the lane ward down. They're going to see FY retreating out. Kaka makes his move. FY into the trees, though. Tucks himself away. Creeps are marching in. <laughs> Even these creeps are trying to scout him out. Yeah, let's get some flying vision in here. But this is taking a while, Dakota. And Invoker is going to join the fray now. Chucks out the tornado. EMP going to connect on Kaka. See you later. Quad rotation top. FY is protected. Yeah, the only hero who didn't come is the Ancient Apparition because he had to go heal. And they're gonna lose the Chen army. That is that's the big loss here. Even more than that, Rubik. A smoke wasted, a sure Beachy Gaming bring almost the entire team top lane, but HGT bring almost their entire team top, and they commit a smoke, and they lose their Chen army. The one hero who comes out nicely from that is Icy. Hits level six, almost seven on the axe, and we'll try to get towards his blink as quickly as possible. Yeah, he had the space now in this bottom lane to kind of take control and build forward towards that, but yeah, Ancient Apparition returns, lets him know that he's there and Bullies him back. I mean, you can tell, though, by that top lane engagement that Hyper Glory team were hoping to get a, a quick pick onto FY and then be able to finish it out with a tower takedown. And they would have got a, a big economy boost from it. But because of how long it took and FY being able to kind of sidestep, VG Gaming were able to rotate and kind of rain on their parade. So VG Gaming holds strong. It's only 3-2 to two to lead this one in as we get to the 10-minute mark. The rune will pop up. Super grabs up the bounty there at the top, and that means the bottom one. It's going to be a haste rune, which Hal will take. So Vici Gaming claim both, as Air in the meantime will work on a double stack of his Radiance own nearby. It doesn't look like attack. they have the vision to scout Top it out. lane, Queen of Pain ult did get, come out as Ice 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 will ravage, try to retreat to safety. They're going to let him go. Didn't have the follow-up to bring him down. So Ravage was expended just to survive. Now we'll see if HGT want to make a play of their own. They committed their Queen of Pain ulti. If you had to give up both ults, I think HGT are slightly happier with that. And now they may be able to take this tower. They're going to lift FY, chucking him forward towards the Queen of Pain's oh, waiting four. arms. Now the centaurs arrive. One stomp, two stomp, not even needed. They'll get the kill. Not so lucky this time. Creeps are there, and he just goes a little too far forward. And because of that, he goes down. And now Hyper Glory team should be able to follow through with taking down this Tier 1 tower, especially with this army. I mean, hell, they even got the skeletons involved in this one. Look at them. Ice, Ice, Ice trying to get yet another stack here, but I, I think this one's about as stacked as it's going to get. They know it's there, man. That trap. It's GT to take the tower top. That's going to give them much better access into these ancients. They've got a backstab path available. If they can just rotate mid, try to take that tier one while the Ravage is still on cooldown, that could put them in a really good position here to, to steal the ancient stack. Ice, Ice, Ice not ready to do it just yet. Only level two anchor smash. Level two crack until he took that early point and gush. It's going to hurt his ability to control these, and things are actually looking pretty damn good for HGT right now, Dakota. They they have their Axe Blink Dagger coming soon. TA is farming quite well. Golden Experience going their way. Orchid's Dyer's inbound. They have a lineup that can attack. take Roche. They can contest these Ancients. They know about the stack. They're in position to seize control of this game. If they play their cards right, they could Dyer's maybe steal the Ancients, take the Roche, and a Tier 1 mid, suddenly you're up like close to a 10k gold lead and Radiant's this game gets completely out of control. Yeah, this is when their lineup is really supposed to peak here. And well, super, that's my bounty ring. Sorry, honey. TP has the stick. No oh, blink tornado, available tornado, just yet. Oh, oh, close. Able to get up and away. Meanwhile, back lines. FY is going to get caught out and he gets taken care of from both the TA and Kaka's Rubik. Now super are going to be in trouble. Here comes the lockdown and they get it done. Big oh, boom right here for Hyper Glory team and... Well, this is their time to really shine, and as they're how able hard to get can Hal kills, carry? Invoker's getting shut down now. He's sitting pretty damn far behind the TA. the The Tide Hunter of Ice 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 is he's doing okay considering the pressure he's been under, but it's not like he's having an explosive performance. And Dakota, they want these ancients. They're walking right in to try and jack them now. They've known about them for so long, and they're gonna get a lot of them if the rotation doesn't come. Ice Ice Ice, get into position. At least we'll get the experience what here for some. What are you doing to my ancients? Give me them! Give me them! Don't touch these! Ah, Ravage! Go, men! Can you steal it? No, got the anchor smash. Oh, we'll connect. FY, though, to the low ground with that lift. Here comes Hal, moving forward. Hand to God. Kaka loses the stick. He's fine. Sonic Wave flies out into Hal, and now the lockdown comes from the Centaurs, keeping him in his place. Rubik will be dropped there on the back end, but here comes Icy moving forward. Still no blink, but he's happy to walk himself in there. Gets off a nice call, but now they turn the damage onto him, and they take down your axe. Uchi Gaming managed to defend their ancient stack and they take down two in response. It does cause them to pull out a lot of rotations, leaving only the ancient apparition there at the bottom, but he did his part. Hyper Glory team, though, not looking to pull back quite they yet. They want to go right back. All right, you just ravaged. Now we're coming for the ancients. Where are you going, Ice Ice Ice? Come over here. I got a net for you. 
Kind of centaur stun with your name on it. Blink in. There's your meld strike. Ice 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 dropping quickly, but survives for a while while Hal tries to clean up ZSMJ retreating out. Air will not be able to get a follow up kill here. It looks like super. Oh, oh, oh. chasing in. Ice Ice with the jukes. He escapes in the end. They still hold the ancients. Fiji Gaming playing from a 4,000 gold deficit at like 10 minutes in. Just refuse to give up the stack. They're not done yet. Now Super shows up to mid lane on the Kaka and we'll get the kill there. That's two back-to-back -back takedowns of your Rubik. So defending the Ancients to the word. <laughs> it's Vici Gaming. What did the, they take down? Four all day? These, go, these guys know what Dota stands for, man. Exactly. Oh my. That is so game-changing. They had such a nice lead for HGT and... You know, they didn't have the, the X Blink Dagger. The Queen of Pain ultimate in that fight wasn't really the best when he used it just on the Morph lane and his own Chen's, his own Chen's creep, so it didn't actually do anything there. I feel like the Quap ulti usage hasn't really been the best from ZSMJ. We saw two ults that didn't get much accomplished. One at least forced out a Ravage, but the other thing is, man, they could really use that Blink on Icy. If he has a Blink there, I feel like it's much easier to get a clean initiation, just kill someone with a dunk before they can throw out another Venge stun, the cold snaps, but Vici Gaming just kiting and controlling. HGT so nicely just buying time for the Ice Blast to cool down. They got like three Ice Blasts off in that fight and it makes a big difference now. Suddenly, Fenrir almost has a point booster and Hal doing pretty well as far as his farm goes too. I mean, I understand where Hyper Glory team were coming from with the, an advancement like that. If they were able to get a couple of pickoffs and take the Ancient Stack, that would have been devastating. The idea Vichy was Gaming. right. It was just the, the execution was a little greedy. Like TA went in all by herself to try and take them. Then the Chen army comes. They didn't bring in the axe. The co-op showed up a bit later. I don't think they expected Vici to bring five heroes to the Ancients, but I guess they should have because Vici brought exactly that many. Yeah, it was just very well played. They danced and hopped and bopped and worked with each other to kind of just spread hyperglory team and just got what they wanted, man. Unbelievable stuff. How now makes a visit to the top lane. Will he look to farm it up? And well, your axe was able to throw together a blink dagger, so I see pretty late. No, no smoke on hand though, so finding the right target to make your debut could be a bit tricky here, potentially on bottom. Kaka. Ancient apparitions. Oh, uh, hello! Target, Aha! Ice blast has been taken, and they jump in and look to go. Sonic wave. Hey, I'm gonna taste your own medicine, fool! <laughs> what a play from Hyper Glory team. Oh, that's big. Versus Morphling stealing that ice blast can be can be a Radiance quite a game changer. Now, it's only a level one spell steal, so he's only gonna get a couple more usages out, but nice spell steal for Kaka. And, well, and now a tower. They needed this. They needed this real bad. Still, when we look attack. at the overall game, we talked about it in the draft attack. pretty early. Once the Morphling pick came out at pick number four, HGT don't really have solutions for the Morphling. And how is either building that fast Manta or the fast Lincolns, either way, he will have answers for a potential Queen of Pain Orchid, and that's their that's their only tool to gank him. The, the Lincolns or Manta Dyer's coming very soon. We'll get a Roche on the back of this. HGT just got to keep on pushing the momentum. Dyer's they need to play very up-tempo, and if you're Vici, you're happy to slow it down and just wait. They're going to try to make their move now mid, though. They found ZSMJ. They will pop him off the bat. Chen unable to react there. Had a hand of God. As <laughs> dual ice blasts come marching in. What the hell? Bam, bam, it's a snowball Radiant's fight. I don't think anyone hit anyone, though. <laughs> no, it was a double it, air ball. It looked pretty. <laughs> That's about all it did. These two need to work on their Js. That jump shot happening, but well, they'll make the best of it. Good pick right there. They had to commit a Ravage for it, but to take down that Queen of Pain and put her in check is, I had to imagine, pretty well worth it. It wasn't the Aegis target they wanted. Hyperlord team do get the Roche, but we expected them to have a very good and easy time taking the Roche on the back of a DDTA. It's not too much trouble, so hmm. they get what Dyer's they want, but I don't think VG Gamer are going to be faded by that whatsoever. All right, he's just going straight Scotty. Just going to tank up. Dyer's really good stats item fallen. for Morphling. I don't think anyone disputes how good this item can be. He's slightly vulnerable to the Orchid, but if you run around at, like, I don't know, 1300 to 1500 health unless they get a blink call with the queen of pain alt scream before you pop straight the morph you're probably fine slightly riskier but uh, has a little more potential for reward as well is there's a smoke gank they're gonna spawn out a replicate hgt won't fall attack. for it though they continue hunting towards mid they know the ravage is down this is their time to strike but they just can't seem to find any easy vici gaming pickoffs they're cognizant of all these missing attack. heroes and they're gonna back off I don't know. I didn't see exactly. I think it was the bottom lane where they did that smoke, but Vici Gaming have some pretty aggressive wards down this mid lane, so 
Hey, yeah. Hyperglory team could think they're in the dark. It's really Dyer's not the case. And look at Superman. Able to confidently push forward here on the mid lane, poking a bit. And Hyperglory team, well, they'll take this opportunity to lay down a, an aggressive ward themselves, but they're not finding an opportunity to get Icy really in the mix to make these big jump calls. It's kind of underwhelming when you see an axe with a blink dagger and he's kind of 0 3 and 0. Icy just looking to try to get some dunks happening. Yeah, he hasn't even gotten to approach the rim yet. They keep on stealing the ball at half court and yeah. just running back the other way with it. Well, it's partially just down to... You mentioned the wards. It's the wards and it's just the positioning from Vici. They're playing very defensive whenever they see a couple of heroes missing and they're not giving anything up easily. There will be a smoke here. It was not spotted by that ward in their big camp. And they just barrel down mid onto air. Has the Aegis, so not really the hero you want to go on. Ideally want to get some kills from this as well. They're going to try to wrap around towards the north end. Ghost walk. Used now. And they're going to breach high ground. I see almost in position to reveal this, but not quite. This is more the opening that Vici are hoping for. They're going to get eyes on the axe to start. Silence coming out. Ravage was stolen, though. By no, actually, no. He got the gush only. Thought he had the Ravage steal, but just a split second too slow. Splice does connect on Kaka. Sonic Wave, it looked like it does hit FY and he will go down, but Ice 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 gets another return kill himself, finishing off that Rubik. So it ends up being a two for one trade as Vici Gaming, they said they wanted to fight and I gotta tell you man, they've been looking for a lot of big fights. When the Ravage is up, they look to put it to strong use. They pull out the smokes when necessary and they look for possible engagements when by the draft standards, you would have thought that maybe they look to take things a bit slow. They are fighting. They're just fighting around the route. Oh, ZSFJ mid lane, hold snap, EMP, silenced, and dead. They, they're they just fighting around the Ravage timing so well. Like, every time Ravage is up, we see them go for a fight, whether it's defending their ancients, going for picking a, a little skirmish in the dire jungle. When it's down, they'll play a little more defensively, use these aggressive wards to keep tabs on HGT and, and dodge any pressure. And man, oh man, the wards are so good right now for the Radiant team. You just toggle their vision and they see two-thirds of the map and well, it's only with three towers down there it's not like they have total dominance in terms of tower control but the warding game is really helping they are able to deboard there that kill on mid lane lets them know that there was a ward giving them a bit of extra vision so quickly kaka is on it to kind of remove that extra bit of vision but vg gaming they got the wards worth right there so they're going to be fine they push ahead now 13 to 7 Pretty high goes back to his jungle. He's got his mech and arcane boots, but you got to be in the mix if you want to get the best out of that sustain. And it's proving to be a bit difficult. Vici Gaming have been playing pretty aggressive. And, well, with we Ice 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 leading out the charge, it's hard to get in there with a Ravage. Yeah, it's it's not easy to get in with the Ravage, but they don't right now, but they don't really need to. They're very content to sit back and farm. TA's gone BKB rush. Queen of Pain's going Orchid into BKB. Nobody's playing greedy. The Axe is a bit under farm. Chen is a hero that falls off. You have Ice Blast to deal with his heals. HGT are the team under pressure. We said that from the beginning of the draft. They're the team that just needs to get more done earlier. Take Roshan, take objectives, and and take them cleanly, which that's been the that's been the real struggle. When they do get an objective, it's normally after losing in a fight, or when a Vici Gaming are just getting a nice trade out of it. Now how up to a Yasha and the Morphling. Everybody just Dyer's continue to pile in items for Vici attack. and Radiant's now they'll deny the tower mid. There's just, again, down. there's no clean objectives taken and uh, I, it's just not good enough for HGT. Like, late game, they have the dual core with the TA quad, but realistically, you're fighting to double Ravage at some point this game. Uh oh they find how and they jump on Doom. First, they lead him with the call. Silence is there. Sonic Wave, Dunk misses the mark. But he got off the strength morph, and that's all it takes to keep him alive. Now your Ice Blast coming in. We'll connect on two. Ravage. See you later, ZSMJ. And how oh Mech kept alive. Air even blew his BKB for this. Gets nothing out of it. They're going to lose pretty hard as well. A two for nothing exchange without a Ravage. And without getting the Morphling kill. And he's coming right back. He's got the Replicate ready to rumble. Oh my. That is, again, that just goes down to the draft where it's... They have to get the silence before how strength morphs. If he strength morphs first, then killing him is very difficult. That's got to be morally devastating there for Hyper Glory team. They commit a lot in that smoke, and how almost looks like he gifts them with a free pickoff attempt. But even with the four of them, they couldn't get him down. And just for how long it takes Hyper Glory team to get these picks, it allows Vici Gaming to bring in rotations. It's not the first time we've seen that happen earlier. In that top lane, when they were trying to get FY, they didn't. 
coming up short at the back end of it. But now, BG Gaming back on the objective pack. They're going to look to push down this mid-tier 2 tower. Man, they, they were fighting when there, when there was an Aegis. <laughs> now that there's no Aegis, the aggression is only going to ramp up. They'll go back into the tire jungle, D-Ward the D-Ward, and now they're going to try to take control of this hill again, potentially. This is... This is some chest out Dota. They, they just want to keep the pressure up. It makes for the best Dota though, so... Fichi Gaming showing what it's worth is right now. And it's forcing Hyper Glory Team to be in a very defensive stance. Only like ZSMJ can feel comfortable being out past the front gate with his access to Blink. You see Air who's been constantly scouting out what looks like maybe the hope of a new Roche coming back. He does happen to grab an Invis here. Does it matter if they get the Aegis though? That's what I'm kind of wondering. Like even with an Aegis, I feel like Vici can still easily take HGT in a fight. Yeah. I guess it's more that if Fiji Gaming get the Aegis then Hyperglory Team. Well, <laughs> right, that's gonna be way too hard. Yeah, they can't afford to let them get it, but I also feel like it's not it's not like a game winning Aegis for, for HGT or even close to that. And as this game moves along, Morphling Mansa style coming out now, I do believe. Yep, that's complete on the courier, ready to go. The big item from here is to find that Tidehunter Refresher. If he manages to put one together, I don't know if HGT can even deal with that. Even if their carries BKB dodge it, they're going to lose everyone else. The, the Rubik for sure, the Chen very likely, potentially the Axe. He's still a little ways off of his own BKB. They're going to get the hell out of this Radiant Jungle though. Angry Watermelon. He's on the hunt. Tomato is going to help slow them down a bit. Oh, my life for you. Water, watermelon OP. Yeah. The strongest power fruit of them all. <laughs> well, I think it's a super fruit, right? Super is that what they say? A power super food, fruit? super fruit. Yeah, I think that's what it is. Okay. I wasn't going to let you go with that. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah. You've been living in New York too long. You know, you're reading the Times. You got to get the lingo right. I know my fruit. Disgusting. All right, Ice 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 gets to work with the sweet new stack here, a triple stack. It will be spotted, of course, with this trap, but there's really nothing Hyper Glory Team can do about it. Now seeing that even FY is getting in on the action. You know, they'll just look to kind of bring in an additional economy boost for themselves, even more above than what it was. This was Hyper Glory's team. Uh, it's, it was their game up to about that, what, 13-minute mark, and then things got escalated very quickly there for Vici Game. They are smoking. Ice 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 just used his blink, could get caught out in the river here. They'll start with a blink call. They have that Rubik lift, potentially get swapped to the high ground, though. The quad bolt, not enough to bring him down. FY, staying alive, now running, and the blink. Counter Ravage, where's the backup? Ice Blast coming in, gonna hit on three, but it's after. The heals come out, doesn't get a whole lot done. Now air hunting super. This could be big. They're gonna pop that dust. They managed to steal the cold snap. And with it, may bring super down as well. It's gonna be three falling in the meanwhile, the other side of the fight. Icy and how duking it out. How will clean up one. It's a three for one now, and it looks like the chase continues on to mid where Fenrir will go down at the Radiant Tier 2 Tower. A four for one exchange with the Ravage expended. Oh, oh my, that was. That was aggressive. Ice 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 gets swapped out. Could have just walked away. Just lose oh, a Venge. Man. He thought they had the big counterplay potential with the four hero Ice Blast, the Morphling coming in. Couldn't get the job done. And that, that's devastating. Couldn't have asked for anything better to for a Hyper Glory team turnaround, man. Big team fight there. And now a segue into the Roche Pit. Well, they'll be able to claim the Aegis, so. This is going to help get things back to square even. About only a 2,500. I, I feel like we just hit the reset button. Yeah. <laughs> now now the, it's a new game. It's a new game. Still, matchup-wise, it's a very good Morphling game. Yeah. They would still have the potential for that double Ravage later on. It looks like Ice 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 goes now for Plate Mail. Maybe even go straight into a Shiva's Guard. I still slightly favor Vici Gaming matchup-wise, but it doesn't mean HGT can't outplay them and, and take this game, Dakota. That... That just came down to excellent initiation and a, a risky attempt there by Vici to completely turn the fight, which ended up not paying off. So with all those huge rewards, what have Hyper Glory team done with the money here? Looks like IC is on the verge of finishing out a BKB for himself. Air coming into that Roche. Uh, he did have the Crystals already, but if he's looking to complete out the Daedalus, he's on good track here, almost having the Demon Edge now. And for everyone else, Blink Daggers. They must have been on sale because we got one on Kaka, we got one on Air, we got one on Icy. Plenty to go around. So. Chen really needs one. This is just ridiculous that he hasn't picked one up yet. Yeah, you get the Blink in, you summon your creeps, and you got free qu quick lockdown. Uh, that That is one of my favorite clips. The Right after the change came out with yeah. the, the four centaurs and... 
Blink in, perma chain stun, solo kill Chen. Everyone's like, that's cute. I'm not going to do it. <laughs> that's cute. We haven't really seen it in a pro game yet, sadly. Uh, it, Someday. You someday. invest so much into it, and I, I would assume that if it doesn't work out, then you've just committed so much to a blink dagger. Yeah, that could be a four staff. That could be the half of your Aghanim Scepter, which, as we've seen, is just annoying as hell to play against with the, the HPR from the Ancients. So, kind of risky. And Ice Ice Ice, he's not going to be going right for a refresher. He's got a plate mail on yeah. hand. Could be a casual plate mail. I I don't know if he actually completes a Shiva's here. Shiva's is decent versus HGT. Uh-oh, they, they smoke right under a Dire Ward, though, Dakota. Can they spring a little trap here? They're going to have the vision for it. Yeah. They know what's happening. It looked like it was pinged out. Air just heads to the north and away. Everyone else says, get the hell out of here. And they just go right into the comfort of their home base. Pretty oh, Haw is spotted out here. He's going to march back to base, and it looks like everybody will Yeah, survive. they're just like, get inside. Close the door. Lock it. Shut the windows. There's a storm coming. Yeah, Vici Gaming are on the loose. They are able to take this opportunity to place uh, another aggressive ward in the mid lane here. And all the while, Howe's been farming top lane, and he's got 4,300 gold. 5-0 and oh, has yet to even be brought down. Team is heavy, but how how's been lifting? Yeah. Oh, Air gonna use his blink into the mid lane. This could set up. Dude. Roll, there you go. Blake Ravage to start. BKB dodged by ZSMJ, though. Quick reactions from him. They will get the Rubik to start the fight. Now ZSMJ trying to turn and engage. Has the ulti. Chucks it on Ice Ice Ice. You already ravaged. That's not really your ideal target for the Queen of Pain ulti. It ends up being a one for zero exchange. They have the BKB on air, but he just gets chunked down anyway. Now he comes back, but with no BKB for round number two. He does have the Aegis, and will use it to run away. Vici Gaming, even playing against an Aegis, playing from behind in some ways, it doesn't really matter. Their team fight's just that strong. Yeah, if they see an opportunity, and that opportunity presented itself because even with their smoke being spotted out, it forced Hyper Glory team to kind of move together as a group, and that's when Fiji Gaming can find their best opportunity to lead in with a big team fight on the back of a huge Ravage. So they see that chance, and they take it. It's not as profitable as they were hoping for, but it was enough to kind of keep Hyper Glory team in check. And, of course, they are able to bring down the Aegis, which is certainly nice. So we'll see if Fiji Gaming kind of want to continue to do this thing where they kind of put their fights around the Ravage on when it's up and ready, or if they're going to kind of continue to go on the loose. I wonder what the next step is here for HGT. Seems like they just want to kind of split push farm a bit. When they don't have the Aegis, they're, they're playing pretty defensively, and to me, the way that they can... Uh-oh. Hold that thought. Super is hunting now. He's a ghost walked up. Has the Orchid ready. Can't really go on either of these heroes because they both have BKBs. Unless he... Oh, whoops. Definitely whoops. <laughs> well, double whoops. That's <laughs> just... Exactly. Just a lot of whoopses there, but yeah, no real harm done. He was hoping that they were going to be TPing and he can quickly... Ah, no. No TPs for you. But that's not the case. Here's a tornado. Woo! Looking to scout out the ancient camp, but no ancients there. No one farming it. It seems like their strategy should be to get the TA to the point where she can just jump, like, ideally, like, the Invoker, maybe the Tide, and just blow them up before they get to use their spells or force Ooh. them to waste their spells. But as far as 5v5 fights, it's tough to see HGT taking those head on. Here, uh, catches sight of Ice 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 as he blinks away, tries to go on a chase, but it just takes a quick and easy TP for him to say, see you later. And heads on back. Ice 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 will have his Ravage up by the time he's able to get back into the action. I so mean, just we'll look see. at this Morphling, though. He's got a butterfly now. And this is, again, a game where there's no natural counter to Morphling. The Ancient Apparition's on the Vici side. There's no Elder Titan on HGT's side. They don't have a Doom. They they don't have any instant silences outside of a Queen of Pain blinking in with an Orchid, which, you know, she's got that cast animation on the blink. You can kind of see her coming a lot of the time, and... In any case, there's the Manta to deal with it, so I I just... They're, Vici Gaming are going to have to really misplay for this Morphling to not just get all the heavy lifting done. Vici Gaming are very aggressive. When the Ravage is up, they're ready to fight, man. Yeah. They move together, they de-ward, and they're looking for any sort of open opportunity to get moving on here. And you know that that's what they want to do, because Hal always leaves the Replicate with them. He'll just go off and farm, and if they find a fight, he'll just pop on in and help them clean house. They're scouted possible. out mid. There's a sentry and obs and some Chen creeps just 
parading around and scouting things out. They want to take an easy fight, so if they don't find that clean initiation, they'll just let their morphling farm continue to control the map. I mean, it's not like HGT are getting much out of this. They're, they've got an axe split pushing. That's that's about it. It seems like a lot of this may be just setting up for that next Roshan for Vici Gaming. If they can snatch it away from HGT, we have seen how hard this Morphly is to kill once. Killing them twice. Oh, man. I don't know if they can do it. Mid lane. Timid play from both sides as they both have some aggressive wards here. Hyperglory team not allowing Vici Gaming to have that extra bit of knowledge. They had dewarded it. Still have more time before this Roche does come back up. Do they have a gem? Yeah, they do. They have a gem on Ancient Apparition, so that's good. He now can dish out the Ice Vortex to kind of de-ward anything from the high ground as he was able to scout out the high ward behind Roche, but yeah. All right, so VG Game, we just kind of want to look to be able to suffocate. Settle down. We, we had a little base. too much action earlier, you know. Let's mm -hmm. lower our bro blood pressure here. Discipline is important. But to be fair, this pace is exactly what VG Gaming should be comfortable with. They, they have the late game if they play it right. This is they, the pace we were expecting when we saw the draft. Right, yeah, like some of those earlier movements of aggression, I think they worked really well because they just caught HGT off guard. They are going to make their way bottom Dakota, and it's pushing pretty far as air, though it looks like he'll be able to TP out in the nick of time. Tornado scouting, not going to find him. But VG Gaming keep kind of pressuring Hyper Glory Team and forcing them to guess as far as where they are, and that means Hyper Glory Team have less of the map to farm up, while VG Gaming can kind of take over the Hyper Glory oh, Woods or continue to farm man. up these lanes. and. That's scary when you're going against the Morphling if VT Gaming Squad continues to bring in more and more gold. It's kind of plateaued right now. They are going to build a Hex on Quap. Maybe if they if they Hex him, they could potentially burst him down. The big issue there is you've got Defensive Swap, the Ravage to counter initiate, which can stop... Well, actually, there are three B BKBs, so Ravage may not do much. But just having that Defensive Swap is going to make it very difficult, even if they Hex how to bring him down. Yet I still feel like at this point the Hex is kind of their best tool for dealing with Morphling. It is coming soon. CSMJ almost has the gold for it on this Queen of Pain. Mm. Slow game right now though as the, the Roshan will respawn. It looks like both teams know what's up. Scouted by a Forge Spirit for the Radiant, by a Trap for the Dire. Nobody really wants to be the first team to walk into that pit. At least not yet. Air is hitting like a truck at this point. His daily is complete. He's got 3,200 gold on reserve. Roche is up, and as you can see, the Force Spirit scouts it out. Ice 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 actually grabs an invis, and now he's tail in air. There's going to be the jump in on the super, but a Ravage in return. Icy pops out the BKB, but ZSMJ gets obliterated from Hal with the Ice Blast on top. Now he's going to go ahead and go to town onto air and gets the kill there. Three quickly go down as Vici Gaming. Now quickly sweep through Hyper Glory team, and well, they're going to take Roche while they're at it. Yeah, I mean they could have played that fight better. I'm not not sure why the TA held her BKB so long, but it I don't know if it matters. They they have to like triple BKB dodge ravage or they're just gonna lose the fight. It's it's just at this point in the game, HGT's draft just struggles to match up against Vici. They they really they felt like they could get a lot done early and it it just didn't quite go the way they were expecting. The FY was shut down very hard as the support venge. The Invoker, though, did surprisingly well mid against TA. I think a lot better than what HGT... They were expecting Air to just dominate that matchup 1v1. Couldn't quite do it. But really where this game turned and kind of hinged on was those big Ancient fights, Dakota. We saw them earlier. Looked like HGT might be able to come out on top, but Vici Gaming just brought a few extra bodies to the fight. And once they held those Ancients, it was going to be matchup-wise at least slightly favored to them. But still, give them credit. They're executing well now. And... On the back of that one lane of racks that's uh it's so freaking hard he's got alacrity up I, this is i don't know get a rapier man why the hell not <laughs> he's got the demon edge he could buy it I, mkb would be your safe choice but i would love to, i would love to see rape hey they want an aggressive carry be aggressive there you go buy a rapier well i think they're gonna play it the more safe or way. die a coward <laughs> <laughs> risk being scolded by twitch chat as a coward but well, they'll make the best of it. 21 to <laughs> Joke's 11. on Twitch chat because <laughs> Vici Gaming don't watch Twitch. <laughs> Maybe Ice 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 does, but uh, the rest of them are watching all the Chinese streaming platforms. Uh, the so. Douyu. I don't know what it was called. Yeah, Hu Mao, Douyu, Zanki. I'm probably pronouncing them wrong. They, I heard, are even more ruthless. Ruthless? I don't know. Oh, their chat? Yeah. Just nasty, 
nasty customers? Or? This is just through the grapevine. I obviously don't speak the language, so I can't, you know, okay. verify myself. But we'll word see on the here. street. Smoke attempt. This doesn't feel like a desperate or YOLO kind of a smoke, but they definitely are looking to get something out of it. And unfortunately, they're heading to the, the wrong neck of the woods here. There's not even an ancient stack to steal. They just keep going up to the north, but Vici Gaming are down at the south at this point. Looking to push up from the bottom. Already had done serious damage in the mid lane. Taking out both sets of racks. Being the second set could pretty much be the nail in the coffin here for Hyper Glory team. Yeah, they'll just barrel down bottom lane. They have the Shivas on Tide. Refresher will be next on the agenda. He's got up to 2k gold, so about a little over a third of the way there. Whoa. Oh, hello. He just... Oh, yeah, I was like, how left? And then I looked to track him down, and he kills Rubik. I guess he just had a lingering little replicate that scouted him out, and he saw the opportunity to fight and just took it. And no buyback. Got no, him down. No potential okay. Ravage steal, and they're, they're scouting. Blinking from the Tide Hunter of Ice Ice Ice. Pops the Shivas, and here we go, Dakota. Alacrity Morphling hitting for 400 damage, and he's 0.38 seconds between attacks. This guy is a, a machine gun Morphling, basically. They can't go at him, but they can't ignore him either. That's two lanes of racks. It might just be Megas. Maybe they just even bull rush the throne the way Ice 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 is moving in. It wouldn't shock me. Oh, yeah, they're, they're heading they towards gonna do? Effigies. A ravage. Nope, going to dive Icy straight back towards the well. Nice BKB. You're still slowed down. Now onto Pretty Haunstead. They do lose FY in the rear. House kind of doing his own thing here on the back line, but it's good enough. GG comes out. HGT fail to find their stride in the early to mid game. And when it comes to late game, out walks away. A flawless 10 0 and 5 debut for Vici. Very impressive. Not too shabby for your Morphling. Hey, that's your How Vici Gaming debut. And I think he does some good work, man. Looking so much for needing sharp. a little time to get comfortable, to get warmed up. He just, yeah, he just starts chopping wood right away. 10 0 and 5. Wow. 750 GPM, came to the fights, took the Roche, split push. There was the one tight bottom where they almost caught him, but he managed to strength morph, and that was, that was the only chance they had to kill him all game. I think Vici Gaming are pretty happy with their new roster. It's a bit early to say, but that's a, a good way to start feeling good with your first game going that, that well. Could have been very different. If HGT bring like all five heroes to the Ancients right away instead of kind of trickling one in one at a time, if they manage to steal those Ancient stacks or get three, four kills, mm. then maybe they snowball. They take Roche, they start taking the Outer Towers, but the game really seemed just to hinge on that one fight. Well, we'll have to see here as it is a best of three, and though VG Gaming take game, game number one, we'll see if Hyper Glory team can even things up in game number two and trying to take it all the way, a full stretch to game number three. That's going to be coming up in just a moment. I'm Cobble Guy. That's LD, and we'll be back here in just a moment with more Dota action. See you soon. G2A.com, the best video game store ever. Fast as lightning, solid as a rock, cheap as duck. <laughs> What's more, you can sell on it because it's also a marketplace. Remember, G2A.com, the best video game store ever!